Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's author reading on All About Canadian Books. I am so excited to have Andre Graton and Ian Thomas Shaw as guests today. If you missed our Behind the Book interview, I will put a link down below in the description box, and there will also be a link at the end of this video. Ian Thomas Shaw is the translator for Choosing Eleanor, and he's been kind enough to read a little sample from Choosing Eleanor today. And it's a fantastic book. There'll be links down below so you can purchase a copy as well. So I will quit talking and Ian, over to you. Thank you, Crystal. So this is from chapter one, the beginning. Fabulous. Long before we met, Eleanor was dreaming of me. Not me with his hair, these two hands, or the sound of my voice, no of me as a friend, an ideal friend. I saw her a year ago at the exit of the hospital where I work. She was facing me, her back resting against a telephone booth on the other side of Avenue des Pins. Four women formed a semicircle around her. They kept bursting out in laughter, waving their hands excitedly. I stood there, motionless in the middle of the parking lot spying on her. No one noticed my presence, neither she nor the four other women. I, I could go easily unnoticed, unlike her. Me with my green nurse's uniform, her with her short yellow skirt and high heels. Very quickly, they appeared bored. They shut up, looked around, let out sighs, whose sullen and noisy release could only be imagined. Slowly, they walked down University Street and, with small steps brushing against the pavement, headed south. I followed a few meters behind them. Eleanor was in the middle. Like props, the others deferred to her passively. At the bottom of the hill, she kissed them one by one, then alone, headed southeast to the next bus stop. I slipped in on her right into the lineup. A gold bracelet encircled her left ankle. She was taller than me, even though she had taken off her heels. Once on board, I thought I would talk to her, tell her that we would be friends, or simply talk to her about the nice May weather taking hold of the city. But I didn't dare speak. She kept looking straight ahead the whole way. We reached a neighborhood in the city's east end. She pulled the cord two or three times and then jumped up, up out of her seat. There were four or five of us getting off behind her. She walked a few minutes before entering one of the tall, dirty buildings on Rue Juliette. She didn't use a key. A few seconds later, I snuck inside. I heard a door slamming on one of the upper floors, but wasn't able to identify which one. I sat on a step and waited. I then imagined Eleanor at home, changing out of her clothes, putting on more comfortable ones, cooking something, maybe pasta, the heat and steam enveloping the kitchen and leaving a fine mist on the beige painted walls, windows and floor tiles. She opens a window. She sits on a bottle green moleskin sofa. She turns on the television. She lights a cigarette. That's when she starts thinking about me. This scenario emboldened me. I got up. My uniform was dirty and stuck to my buttocks and the back of my knees. I went up to the first floor. There were two apartments. I knocked on the first one but no one answered. The door to the second one opened immediately. An old man with his shirt off asked me in a hoarse voice what I wanted. The TV was screaming behind him. I showed him the scarf I kept at the bottom of my bag. Uh, does this belong to you? No. And he closed the door. From behind the only door on the second floor, she appeared. I stammered, uh, hello, madame and adopted the same tactic. 
but the scarf didn't belong to her. That I knew. She looked at me for a few seconds while squinting. She no longer had on her short yellow skirt, but a gray terry cloth dressing gown. She wanted to close the door. I insisted a little on shaking her hand and wishing her a nice evening. I also showed her proof of my identity, health and social insurance cards, driver's license. I've been working for seven years at the reception desk of the Royal Victoria Hospital. I saw you there at the exit earlier. I'm not used to approaching strangers like this, but it's not the same with you. Do you understand? Of course you do. Friendship is such a rare thing. I continued for a few seconds to talk about the virtual friendship. Then I sort of lost track of what I was saying. She closed the door. I waited a few minutes. I crouched down to look through the keyhole but couldn't see anything. Finally, my back against her door, I slid to the floor to listen to the sounds inside. The TV was off. Maybe she was reading a novel, let's call it Amour, one that she had barely started. I heard her cough several times. I recognized the sound of the bathtub filling up. She was there for a long time. She played music, I don't know what. The silence returned. I looked at my watch, it was after midnight. I was supposed to be at, in the hospital the next day at seven o'clock. I stayed there for a few more minutes, singing a sweet song, a lullaby, certain that she would like this tune. Then a man, a stranger, came up the stairs. He stopped in front of the door, fists on his hips, looking down at me. I refused to let him pass, explaining that Eleanor was asleep, no doubt about it. He laughed nervously. He claimed he was invited. He gradually became angry as I stubbornly refused to move. He shouted through the door to Eleanor. Growing impatient, he grabbed me under my arms, brusquely lifted me up and pushed me aside. I fell down the stairs and lost consciousness. I was told at the hospital that a neighbor had called the police. I received five stitches and fractured my right wrist. I filed a complaint against the stranger on the advice of the two female police officers who had questioned me at the hospital. When I saw Eleanor accompany the violent man to the police station two weeks later, she didn't dare look at me, probably out of shame, out of decency. So I decided to help her. I withdrew my complaint. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Ian Thomas Shaw, for reading Choosing Eleanor. And Andre Graton, what a fabulous debut novel, Choosing Eleanor. Thank you both. Thanks. And thank you thank for you, watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.